So I think it's pretty apparent now, as guitar players, we live in the age of digital modeling. I think it's pretty clear at this point to say that modelers aren't going anywhere. And if anything, they're getting more and more popular by the day. Now, I don't want to get into the modeler versus tube amp, analog versus digital debate. Frankly, there's way too many other places and videos online for you to do that. Instead, this video is for the people out there that are using modelers and want to make them sound as close to a real tube amp as possible. I'm gonna show you five different tips and tricks to make your modeler sound, feel, and respond like a tube amp. Whether you're using something from Line 6 or Kemper or Fractal or Strymon or any of the other number of modeling manufacturers out there, these five tips will work across all the different platforms. These are some fundamental techniques that I've found to be really effective no matter what modeler you're using. But before we jump into it, if you're new here, welcome to the channel. I'm Rhett Scholl. I post new videos every single week. Be sure to subscribe and click the bell icon down below. And this video is sponsored by my brand new HX Stomp preset pack. All of the sounds that you heard in the intro track of this video were recorded through the HX Stomp with those brand new presets. So if you're a Stomp user and you wanna check out the new sounds, it's a great way to support the channel and what I'm doing here. You can find those linked down below. So with all that out of the way, let's jump into the first tip. Okay, so the first thing I always do whenever I'm creating a preset or profile in any one of my modelers is use high pass and low pass, or sometimes referred to as high cut and low cut. Now, if you're not familiar with the concept of high passing and low passing, it's just simply rolling off the high end, which is known as low passing, and the opposite of that would be rolling off the low end, which is known as high passing. A tube amp naturally high passes and low passes signals on its own. A guitar amp is not designed to be a full range, full response or FRFR -FR amplifier, something like a PA, for example. A traditional tube amp only needs to be able to reproduce signals that are in the guitar's range. Now, modelers like the HX Stomp are capable of full range, full response. They can produce frequencies from the low end, 20, 30, 40 hertz, all the way up to the super high end air frequencies of 10,000 hertz and up. So by utilizing the high pass and low pass, we can immediately limit the modeler's ability to produce frequencies that are outside of a normal guitar amp's capabilities. Now this is especially useful in the top end. So by low passing or high cutting, we can immediately replicate what the frequency response of a tube amp will do. So on the HX Stomp, you can do this globally by going to the global EQ settings and starting off all the way on the low end, we have low cut. And the first thing I like to do is start with the low cut around 50 hertz. Now that's a good starting place because there's really no reason the guitar should be producing low end frequencies at all, especially in the context of a live mix. That's where the bass guitar, the kick drum, any super low end synth or keys information is all gonna live there. There's no reason a guitar should be down there. Now the reality is I usually set this a little higher. The minimum I go to on all my presets is about 80 Hertz. Now where we're gonna get the biggest change is in the high cut or low pass. So right now I've got the high cut off. And if you put headphones on or listen through studio monitors, you might be able to tell that this preset is pretty bright. There's a lot of top end information happening here. So I pretty much always run my low pass at at least 10K. Now if I play the same thing, you should notice that there's a little less fizz coming from the top end. Now that's usually where I start. And depending on the preset and what I'm going for or the type of guitar that I might be using, I'll take it even lower, sometimes to 8K. So this is a pretty good place to start. Rolling off the low end at about 80 hertz and above, and rolling off the high end at about 10K and below. And you can experiment with your settings and see what you like the best. 
So my next tip is using compression. Now, if you are a fan of the channel, you might be surprised to hear me say this because all the time I talk about how I'm not a fan of compressors, but let me explain. One of the greatest things about tube amps is the ability to change how dirty or clean they are depending on how hard or soft you're picking or playing on your guitar. If you have a compressor on, it's evening out all of those picking dynamics, which is taking that dynamic element away from your playing. There are different parts of a guitar amp circuit that act as natural compression, especially when you're using overdrive. And even an overdrive pedal is a sort of compressor. So when you look at it that way, I don't like compressors before an amp. However, on a modeler like this HX Stomp, for example, oftentimes I will put a compressor as the last block in the signal chain. Now this is a great utility tool and you can accomplish a few different things from this, but chief among them for me is acting as a way of evening out the signal right before it hits front of house or your recording software. You can think of it as being in a recording studio and adding some light compression after the microphones, after the mic preamps going into your DAW or onto tape. So here I have one of my presets pulled up. This is a vintage Ace 30 or a vintage Vox sound. And you can hear it's traditional chimey Vox edge of breakup tone. <laughs> Now, I've got one of the Line 6 Deluxe compressors last in the chain here, and here's what it sounds like when it's on. Now, it's a pretty subtle effect. There's not a lot happening there, but you'll notice that it's sort of just evening everything out, and it's helping to tame some of those harsher top-end frequencies that people complain about so often when they're talking about modelers. <laughs> It's also changing the way the model feels under my hands. That feels closer to an actual tube amp when the compressor is on. There's a natural sort of squeeze that happens when you push a tube amp, and this is simulating that on the model. Now, if you look at my settings here, you can see it's pretty subtle. I've got the threshold set at minus 20 dB. The ratio is four to one. I leave the attack and release settings as they are in stock form. But the one thing I always check is to make sure that my level is set at unity gain. Now, unity gain means when the effect is off, the volume is the same when it's on. So here's no compression. <laughs> with compression. Now I could probably dial that in a little bit more and get it even closer, but I don't want the compressor adding volume because we always perceive more volume is sounding better. The other thing it's great for is balancing any effects that you might have in the signal chain. Here is a stereo delay that I've got set up. So if I turn the compressor on, you'll notice that it helps tame some of those delay repeats. So it's a pretty subtle effect, but it goes a long way in helping your modeler sound and feel more like a tube amp. All right, for my next tip, I've switched over to the Kemper, and we're going to talk about EQ. Now, don't be intimidated. If you're not used to using EQ or equalization to tile in tones, it can be a little overwhelming at first, especially on something like a Kemper. But this technique is useful for more than just dialing in amp tones on modelers. We're going to be talking about subtractive EQ. And subtractive EQ is just the technique of dialing in EQ settings by pulling out frequencies rather than boosting them. Anytime you are boosting frequencies in EQ, you're adding gain, which is adding volume, and it affects your gain staging down the signal flow. It affects everything downstream after your EQ. So anytime I'm EQing anything, whether it's a guitar amp or something I'm recording in the DAW, I pretty much always prefer to use subtractive EQ. Now this is a good tool for modelers because it allows you to target specific frequencies that are sticking out that might not be represented in a tube amp. So what we're gonna do is find those frequencies that are sticking out and then just 
pull them down, pretty much eliminate them from the overall tone. So we're going to use one of my profiles here. This is a profile of a matchless lightning 15, uh, link down below if you're interested in picking them up, but this is what it sounds like stock. <laughs> Pretty good, but right off the bat, I can tell there's a couple of things that I would wanna pull out if I were using this on a gig. So I've put an EQ block here in the mod slot, and we're just gonna pull it up. This is the graphic EQ that's built in to the Kemper. And this is a good place to start if you're new to using EQ, because the frequencies are pretty much locked in. You can see on the low end, you've got 80 Hertz, 160 Hertz, 320 hertz, 640. So you don't have to worry so much about trying to find the specific frequencies. All you do is use one of these knobs to either boost or cut that frequency. So to my ear sitting in the room, I'm hearing a lot of low end coming from this profile, which isn't represented in the actual amp. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go to 80 hertz here and just pull that down pretty drastically. We're going to start with minus 4 dB and I'm going to pull down 160 hertz as well. Now if I play... That's already sounding better to my ear. It's less boomy, there's less mud in the low end, but there is some harshness sticking out in the upper mid-range that I want to take care of. So I'm going to page over and we're going to look for right here between 2500 and 5 K. So what I'm going to do here is start by finding the problem frequency because right now I can't quite tell where it is. So I want to go to one of these frequencies and just boost it like really, really boost it and then play. <laughs> So you can see there cutting 25 or 2.5 K is really making the guitar lose a lot of its power and a lot of its aggression. So let's jump up to 5 K and see how that sounds. That's the harshness that I was hearing somewhere between four and 5 K. So I'm going to take that and just dip it a little bit, maybe minus two DB here to start with. Now let's see what it sounds like. So the profile still sounds good. And to my ear, that sounds closer to the actual amp in the room. Now what we can do to go back and compare is flip the EQ on and off as we play. The other thing to point out here is where the EQ is placed in the signal chain. I've got it after my pre-effects, after my amplifier, and after my cabinet. But it's before my delay and reverb. And that's because I don't wanna necessarily EQ those effects. I just wanna EQ the amp sound. If you were to put the EQ after the delay and reverb, you are gonna be pulling out those frequencies from the effects, which you might not actually want to do. So. Post amp and cabinet EQ is a great tool to utilize and understand to really dial in your tones. All right, now this next tip is really more of a hack and I can't take credit for this. I found out about this uh, from a guy named Brian Carl, who is a worship guitarist here in Atlanta. And I actually learned this from buying his preset pack a few years ago, which I will link down below because they're actually really good, especially for all you praise and worship players out there that might be using the Kemper on a Sunday morning. His stuff is really dialed in for that sound. Now, this technique utilizes something in the Kemper called the Soft Shaper. And what the Soft Shaper does is basically add soft clipping to your signal. Now, if you don't know what soft clipping is, basically it's the type of clipping or distortion that you would get from like an overdrive pedal. The alternative to that would be hard clipping, which is something you would get from something like a distortion pedal. Now, HW from Tone Junkies Television has a great video on this very subject. He is the resident Kemper expert here on the internet, and I will actually link his video down below as well because it goes into this technique I'm about to show you, but in greater detail. So if you look, I've got one of my profiles pulled up here. This is my Tweed Deluxe amp uh, that I profiled last year. And this is one of my favorite profiles I use 
a lot. But if you look here in the X slot, the effect slot, post, amp, and cab, I have the soft shaper pulled up. Now what this is doing is adding a little bit of distortion, a little bit of soft clipping, after my amp and cab emulation, but before my post effects. The best way I could describe it is that it's emulating some speaker breakup as well as a little bit of the power amp distortion that we all really love from tube amps. So let me play you an example quickly. This is with the soft clipping off. <laughs> Now it's a subtle effect, but again, like the post compression, it's really more of a feel thing than a tone thing. With that soft clipping on, this profile now feels closer to the way my actual tweed amp responds in the real world. Now, if you look here on the drive control, you can tell I'm not actually adding any overdrive, but if I boost that a little bit, <laughs> it will add some grit, but it doesn't sound like an overdrive pedal. You can also use this to boost the signal going into your delays and reverbs and out into the front of house or your monitors, whatever you're going into. This is a really great utility trick that I use on literally every single one of my Kemper profiles. And my final tip is about effect placement. And believe it or not, this actually goes a long way in emulating the way a real tube amp responds. Now, unless you're using an amp that has an effects loop, you're probably putting all of your effects, your distortion pedals, your overdrives, delays, modulations, reverbs into the front of the amplifier. With the modelers, most modelers out there give you the ability to put effects after the amp and cabinet. And this simulates being more of a studio setting where you would put something like a delay or a reverb after the amplifier and sometimes after the cabinet. I've got a profile pulled up here on the Kemper. This is one of my AC20 Deluxe profiles. And what I've done is copied the delay and the reverb settings over to the final two stomp slots right here before the amplifier. So you can hear how they sound completely different. But before we get to that, here is the amp by itself. <laughs> Now, we'll start with the reverb at the end. This is a pretty nice, lush reverb. Just adding a little bit of space. And again, you can hear it's nice and pristine. But this is the exact same reverb with the same settings now before the amp. Sounds completely different. And that sounds a lot closer to what one of my amps sounds like with a Strymon reverb in front of it. You can hear the reverb is a little darker and there's some distortion on it. And that's because the reverb is hitting the preamp emulation and the power amp emulation going on in the Kemper here. Now you're really gonna notice a difference here in the delay. This is a tape delay setting that I've got pulled up. Again, sounds really nice and lush and wide and pristine, but if I go before the amp, now I have. necessarily better than the other here. It comes down to personal taste. But again, if your goal is to make this sound like a real amp, I think putting your delays and reverbs and modulation effects before the amplifier section can really go a long way in getting you there. So there you go. Those are my tips and tricks for making your modeler sound and feel like a tube amp. If you enjoyed the video, let me know by leaving a like down below and let me know if you have any tips or tricks in the comments section down below. Maybe I missed something or maybe you're doing something that I haven't considered and would like to try out on my setup. Be sure to check out the HX Stomp presets linked down below as well as my Kemper profiles and my other full-size Helix presets. Those are all linked down below as well. 
You can also find the green room linked down below. That's a private forum for people that want to support the channel more directly. We have monthly challenges going on over there, which are a lot of fun. If you want more information, that's linked down below. And you can also find links to the channel Discord server, which has grown a lot recently, and it's actually quite a bit of fun over there. So if you're on Discord, check that out down below. Anyways, I'm Rachel. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. And remember, there is no plan B.